going to go into all the details of how this works and and this video is not just for uh, coffee connoisseurs or you know hobbyists who, who love their coffee and have a passion for coffee if nothing else it's it's an informative video for people who just didn't know about this kind of stuff this is new to me I knew that I wanted to uh, you know indulge into the uh, the whole world of espresso and as well as different uh, milk based coffee drinks I've always been a coffee fan ever since I was about 10 years old I like coffee of course I've gone through different phases as a 10 year old I love coffee like I guess most 10 year olds do if you do drink coffee and that's pretty much a whole lot of uh, milk and sugar with a little bit of coffee in it <laughs> it's more like a candy milkshake than anything else but uh, I remember taking a trip with my grandfather and um, he drank his coffee black and he refused to ever prepare it the way I wanted it so I got used to drinking black coffee on my trip and I came back I never went back I, I preferred black coffee just very simple I wanted the quality bean and then you know quality coffee to drink and not drown that out by sugar and cream but uh, these days I wanted like I said I want to experiment I kind of got into the whole Starbucks thing and I mean not that I personally go but you know learning and reading and, and hearing about people's experiences with different coffee houses and baristas and this that and the other thing and it got interesting and I thought well, what's the big deal I've never had a cappuccino I've never had a, a latte I've never had a macchiato uh, I never had any of these things didn't know what they were and I wanted to learn more about them and as you guys should probably know by now when I get into a hobby I <laughs> dive in head first and so I knew I was going to get uh, an espresso machine to try out and I wanted to learn everything about it. And in doing research, I found a bunch of different companies, of course, that offer them. But there's one specific company that stood out to me in a lot of different ways. And before I really get into the review, I want to talk about that company in general. And they are Whole Latte Love. That's where I got this specific machine. That's where I got the coffee you see on the left-hand side, even the mugs on that are on the uh, um, cup warmer on top of the machine. Um, this company, first of all, their, their website layout was by far superior to any other website and in fact I think it's a uh, it's a great format that I think any company can go by when you go to the website everything is categorized so perfectly and so conveniently it's 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 a pleasure to look through and I've literally spent probably two or three hours looking at all their products because it's so easy to use um, I really wish that other knife companies and uh, you know even gun related stuff and all kinds of things that I'm interested in, all my different hobbies, uh, outdoor gear, any kind of uh, company that I'm going to be buying a product from, I wish it was set up in a very similar manner uh, to Whole Latte Love. And when you click on a product, you, the drop down menus, they obviously have uh, uh, user feedback with uh, reviews, but the details they give you not only on the product, but you know, even comparing it to other similar products you may like, um, having an actual like chart that's showing you the differences and the pros and cons of different things. It's just a fantastic layout. I can literally make a 20 minute video just talking about their website. But more specifically, um, the people. The people who work there. I did find that they had a YouTube channel. Uh, in fact, I dropped down one of their product um, products I was looking at and on the bottom was a, uh, a video. I started playing it and I looked at the corner I saw it was a YouTube video. I'm like, oh cool. And I double clicked on the uh, YouTube icon and it brought me to their page and it, I saw they had dozens and dozens of videos on different products that they offer. Uh, again, extremely professionally done, but the people, you can really tell that their staff knows what they're talking about first of all. all right, when you're selling a product, you have to know that product, not just because you read a book on it you know, or a pamphlet or you took a class. You have to know the product because you use them. It's like anything else. You trust the people who actually use the products they sell. I had called them on the phone to get some more information about a product I was interested in and I talked to both uh, Morgan. Uh, as well as Tracy, and they, they were really the friendliest people in the world, very uh, very welcoming and warm, and of course answered all my questions that I had. Uh, I, I just, I fell in love with the idea of this company and everything they stand for. So anyway, I just want to say that I really wish that other companies were, they're very ideal uh, as far as business goes. It's not just business. It, these are people who use these things every single day. They're down to earth. They're people just like you and me. And it's really, really fun to relate to the people you're actually buying products from. Now, like I said, I can go on for 20 minutes just talking about the website and the people. Uh, I, I'm just a huge fan. And I, I can promise you that if I need anything coffee related, even remotely coffee related or tea related, uh, they are my go to company. Uh, just extremely happy with them. But uh, anyway, yes, on to the actual review here. Um, yes, this is a, a Gaja Barrera. Gaja is the, uh, the brand of machine, and the Barrera is the specific model. Uh, Gaja, like many other companies, have many different models. The uh, the pros of this specific model, the, the biggest attributes of this is that it's it's size, pretty much. Okay, this is 12 inches tall. There's a standard ruler here. All right, 
Um, a lot of these uh, super automatic machines tend to be a little bit bigger. Um, the pro with this machine is, first of all, affordability is definitely uh, on the cheaper side. Now, when I first did a little preview of this video, um, people, of course, immediately, very interested, look it up, and they go, wow, it's $674.25. And they go, wow, I probably wouldn't spend that much uh, on a coffee machine. Well, this isn't a coffee machine. Um, in fact, this uh, being a super automatic espresso machine and the quality that it does have, that is a fantastic price. Um, it is on sale currently on the website. Um, the MSRP is 800. Now I know for a lot of people, if you're just an average person who you know has a $10 coffee machine and just makes straight black coffee or whatever, um, that seems ridiculous. But you have to put things in perspective. Just to give you an idea, uh, other super automatic espresso machines can range anywhere from uh, 400 bucks to 3,200 dollars. Okay, when you go into uh, some of the um, you know big. Uh, company machines that make you know three expressos at a time you're talking up to sixteen thousand dollars for an espresso machine so believe it or not this is definitely on the more affordable side and like anything else it's it's specific to uh, someone who wants that quality or and or convenience um, this machine is is pretty much um, a great benefit to anyone who ends up visiting places like Starbucks or their local coffee houses or baristas and you're paying six, seven dollars for a couple, a specialty cup of coffee, and you're talking about people who do this daily, if not multiple times every single day. Uh, you easily spend thousands of dollars on coffee already, so investing five or six hundred bucks uh, into a machine like this, believe it or not, is a huge, huge money saver. But like anything else, it's not for everyone. If I do a review on a four hundred dollar knife, not everyone's going to be interested. It really is no difference. It, you have to put it in perspective. But as far as what this machine has to offer, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, what is a super automatic espresso machine? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can make espresso, and um, this is the literally the most convenient way. A super automatic is kind of like what it what it suggests. It does everything for you. It's it's totally automated. Um, this is what's referred to as a bean to cup machine. You put fresh roasted whole coffee beans in the top. Turn it on, push a button, and you have fresh roasted uh, espresso. And of course, you can use that to make a multitude of drinks. And yes, you can make regular old black coffee. And now towards the end of the review, I will uh, tell you um, why I really prefer this machine over just the standard traditional drip coffee style. And it's basically how it's brewed. It, it really, you could take the exact same coffee um, and prepare it in four different machines you know, or by hand and get four different flavors. So we'll talk more about that later in the review. Now, of course, with any machine or specifically any product, there's gonna be pros and cons, nothing's perfect. Um, where this really shines, I think, is it's the fact that it's so compact, okay? Um, this is only 12 inches high, all right? And about 12 and a quarter inches to the very uh, highest point of the machine, which is the lid for the bean hopper on the back. A lot of people have a limited height on in their kitchen because of their cabinets. Now, if I put the camera up, you'll see that I still have some excess room on top here. So size isn't a huge issue. Um, I still like the fact that it's very compact here. Uh, price is an issue, okay? There's a lot of different factors and people pick different machines for different reasons. Does the $500 machine make coffee just as good as the $3,200 machine? In most cases, yes, it really just depends. I think personally that it, it comes back to uh, whatever coffee beans you're putting into it. You have a quality coffee bean, the machine plays a little part in how it's gonna taste. However, um, this machine is still extremely capable and I think would make just as good of a cup of uh, you know, uh, coffee or a uh, shot of espresso just as much as the, the $2,000 machine or the $1,500 machine or anything else. But um, the pros of the machine on this specific machine are very great. The biggest one obviously is size. A lot of people do have that limited uh, counter space uh, as specifically the counter uh, height because of their cabinets being over top. But besides that, uh, two features on this machine that I really, really like compared to a lot of the other machines is the fact that both the water reservoir and the, uh, the drop container where your, your uh, used coffee grinds, actually coffee pucks, because it's, you'll, you'll see that later, but they both uh, are in the front. So very easily accessible. Once I turn this machine on and push it back into the nook, I keep this in the corner of my, uh, uh, my kitchen counter here. Um, I don't have to touch it. I don't have to constantly move it. A lot of these different machines, your water reservoirs are on the side or even the back. And you're talking about handling your machine constantly. And every single time you move your machine, you have a possibility of damaging it. You know, it can fall over in the sink. You could drop it off the floor, whatever. I mean, of course, you know, you want to be careful. But it's a huge convenience, in my opinion, to have these. Everything is accessible from the front. 
that's it. There is a power switch on the back. It's like the, the master uh, power for the machine. And then of course you have a power, an on and off switch on the front. This is a uh, money saving machine as opposed to some of the other ones that will draw uh, more electricity. But I do like the biggest thing for me, not only being compact, but it's, it's also the fact that you can access both the reservoir and the uh, you know kind of garbage container, I'll call it, or drop box um, from the front which is really, really nice. Um, some of the downsides you get because it is smaller, obviously capacity. The bean hopper on top, which I'll show you in a second, uh, holds a maximum of 8.8 .8 ounces of beans and the water reservoir holds about 40 ounces of water. Now for me, in my specific use for this, which is, you know, on a uh, on an average basis, I'll probably make one to two coffee drinks a day with this machine. If you're someone who makes eight or nine or 10 cups of coffee or, you know, shots of espresso or, or whatever, any kind of milk-based coffee drink, and you're constantly using a machine or perhaps you uh, constantly entertain, maybe you're in a household with 10 people in it, who knows. Um, you'd probably want to go with something that's bigger for the, the sheer fact that you don't have to put water in it as often, you don't have to fill the bean hopper as often. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty simple um, things to think about there, but they, they might be overlooked. Uh, definitely pros and cons and everything. The biggest con with this is be the fact that it is smaller you do have to um, fill the hopper and the water more often, as well as, as empty your, your dump uh, tray there. So, just something to consider for my personal use. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, since I had this machine, I put fresh beans in once and I uh, filled the water twice. Not a big deal. Uh, by the way, this, uh, this does not come with it, but in the water reservoir, pull this whole thing out for you, you do have a... Uh, um, a place to put a filter if you want to put a uh, like a charcoal filter in here or something I've been filling this machine with spring water and it's been fine. It has not affected in my opinion the taste of the coffee But if you want to use tap water, you know, you can easily put in a, uh, a filter uh, system in that reservoir All right, so yes, you are limited in your capacity So if basically if you're using the machine quite often or have a high volume of use you may want to prefer or you may want to consider a, uh, a larger machine but for me and my uses I think it's absolutely perfect I don't need the smaller space but of course I value my countertop space I got all kinds of crap on my counter <laughs> so anyway like I said on the back is the uh, on off switch right next to the power plug so once we turn this on you'll see our power button is going to just slowly flash red and that's normal just to continuously do that on top here, here's where the, the cup warmer is. I'll bring the camera in a little bit. I'll show you some detail here. So let's pull the machine forward more. Move our cups for a second. All right, now on top here on the front where the cups you see, this is where I store these cups, these glasses. This is a, uh, a cup warmer on the top. Now this is passive, meaning that it, there's not a specific heating element that's keeping this hot. You know, you're not pushing a button and starting this to get it nice and warm. Uh, being passive, basically as your, your uh, boiler inside is heating water and stuff like that, the steam that is, you know, produced by the machine, either by, you know, the, um, the steam wand or internally, it's basically rising. Heat rises, steam rises, so this does get a little bit warm. I did find that this does not get incredibly hot, so you'll never burn yourself on it, first of all. But I prefer um, to warm my cup because when you're pouring your shot or, or having a cup of coffee, it's something I never really even thought of until I started watching uh, some of these videos on their on Whole Latte Loves uh, YouTube page. Is when you're pouring hot coffee into a you know cold cup or even a room temperature cup, you're losing the heat of your coffee. You're, the cup itself is immediately shocking that heated coffee and pulling the temperature down, and um, you know your coffee cools off faster. So it makes sense to warm your cup, uh, you know, before you actually fill it with coffee. It's something really simple. I, I never thought of. I just never thought of that. And believe me, it makes a difference. But what I'm the point I'm trying to make here is that this passive cup warmer on top, although it does get warm, it doesn't get warm enough for my preference. So what I do is, when um, the machine pushes water through the uh, the steam wand to clean it, I'll fill my cup with that. Or when it does its uh, rinse cycle, which you'll see here when you turn the machine on. After it's been off for a while, it will go through a rinse cycle. Okay, basically pump hot water uh, through the machine to clean everything out. If there's a, you know old coffee sitting in there in the lines or something, it cleans all out, which is fantastic. What I'll do is before I make a cup of coffee, I will uh, fill the cup. With, I'll use the cup I'm going to make the coffee in to catch that water, and therefore warming my cup. Okay, or if you want to, you can get hot water from your steam wand uh, to fill your cup to keep it warm as well. But anyway. 
that's the passive uh, cup warmer. A lot of these uh, super automatics will have some form of a cup warmer. Uh, some of the bigger ones and or more expensive ones have a specific heating unit that's made just to heat that, okay, whether it's electronic or from the boiler itself. But on top here, we have our bean hopper. All right, there's a, uh, a lid for it with a rubber seal on it so it keeps all the air out of your beans so they keep nice and fresh. All right, like I said, it holds up to uh, 8.8 .8 ounces in here. Um, what I'm using, the coffee I've been using lately is this, uh, it's actually from Whole Latte Love. They have their own, uh, a couple different coffees, but this is the uh, Buzzopolis, and it's a dark roast um, whole espresso beans. And uh, <laughs> this is really, really good coffee. I don't know if it's specifically because the coffee beans are so good or the fact that I've never had like a pressure brewed cup of coffee or, you know, espresso or anything like that. But it is the flavors that I'm getting out of this coffee are off the charts. It's phenomenal. It's really, really delicious. This specific coffee, you actually get uh, a very slight um, uh, kind of a smokiness and a slight berry flavor. And I actually prefer to uh, make espresso shots with this specific coffee. And when I'm making like just a, a longo or a long cup of coffee, you know, traditional black coffee, whatever, um, I'll actually use a different bean. Uh, and I've used ground coffee as well. I always keep ground coffee on hand. Just really cheap, you know, I think this is, uh, I think it's Maxwell House or something. Just some cheap, whatever, pre-ground coffee. And they have a uh, bypass doser here you can put grinds in, which is a huge, a really big beneficial feature. I think pretty much every super automatic espresso machine has this option. So if you don't have access to whole coffee beans, um, or perhaps you don't want to spend the money on whole coffee beans, tends to be more expensive. Um, you have pre-ground coffee, whether it's really high-end or really cheap, you know, crappy coffee. <laughs> Either way, uh, you can directly put this in here and it comes with uh, its own scoop. The machine comes with this plastic scoop you see right there. And it's the exact dose you want for a, uh, you know, for this specific machine. And basically, you know, you don't have to even touch the lid. When the lid's on, you have access to this uh, bypass doser and you put your grinds right in there. Now you can put your grinds in there to make regular coffee. You can do anything with that, but basically you have the option to not grind fresh beans, okay, and to just use ground coffee, pre-ground coffee. The biggest benefit to this is if perhaps someone doesn't like the coffee you have in here, or the big example, you know, you see a lot of them uh, talk about is uh, decaf. You have some kind of, uh, I don't know, entertaining situation, and someone doesn't drink regular coffee, they drink decaf. Or you have a flavored coffee bean or something, and they don't, or let's say you have a regular coffee bean, they want a flavored coffee. All you have to do is open this lid here, which is accessible from the top of the machine, pour in your pre-ground coffee, and you can make just that. You don't, it's just completely separate from this. Now, the Super Automatics, they grind your coffee as well. I'm just gonna turn the machine on for a second here and put the cup in. So while I'm talking, it can go through that rinse cycle. Push that back so you can see that as well. Um, yes, all the uh, Super Automatics will have their own um, built-in grinder. That's bean to cup, it's doing everything for you. So you actually have a coffee grinder within the machine itself which is fantastic. And what happens is when it goes on, it vibrates and um, pulls all the beans down in there and grinds exactly what you need for one brewing process. All right, and every single time you brew, it grinds fresh coffee beans. So right now it's doing like the, uh, the pre-brew wash. And it's gonna push some hot water through the system. And again, it's just, just cleaning it out right now, which I think is awesome. You don't want old residual coffee, you know, in your new cup. Put this lid back on. Oh, actually, you know what? Something else I want to show in here. Pull this back forward. When you're, uh, when you're grinding your coffee, you have an adjustment knob here uh, for your grinds, all right? There's five different adjustments, and basically this is how fine your coffee grinds are. When you're making espresso, you want a really fine setting. Okay, so when the, the water, hot water is pushed through your, your grinds, the finer it is, the more flavor you're really picking up on that. It's very kind of condensed flavor. If you're making a traditional cup of coffee, regular old coffee, you know, whether it's black or you put cream and sugar in or whatever, um, while the grinder's on, that's when you adjust this and you basically rotate this to a, a higher uh, or a bigger circle. I don't know if you can see those on there. But basically that's, you know, showing you that it's a, uh, you know, the grind setting. So there's five different grind settings on this. And if I'm making a regular cup of coffee, I will, as it's starting to grind, I'll turn that over and it'll basically open up where it's grinding and it'll, it'll grind a, a coarser grind, okay? 
So, let's put this back on here. Now, I'm going to, uh, of course I'll demonstrate and I'll show you, I wanna make a, uh, a shot of espresso first, just to show you what it's like. Let me get rid of this hot water. Now on the front here, where the, uh, the coffee dispenses out, there is an adjustment. Pull on both sides. This will raise and lower the, uh, the spout where it's actually coming out. So if you have a, uh, a smaller cup here, let's say this cup, you just want a shot of espresso or something. Um, it basically, you can adjust this down to prevent some splashing. Uh, I found that, I, I haven't used this, honestly. Since I've had the machine, I've had it up the entire time to accommodate larger cups. And believe it or not, this will accommodate a fairly large mug. All right, here's one of my favorite Pottery Barn mugs. And fits perfectly under there. So, it, you know, when I want to make a long coffee or something, or even if I'm making a, uh, a latte, I'll use something like this. But um, that's what that's for, is to, uh, to minimize your splashing. But I found that even, even like that, it doesn't really splash. But if you wanted to, you can pull it all the way down. If you had an actual, a much smaller cup um, for your shot of espresso, you can do that. So that does adjust. So anyway, let me, uh, let me talk about this drip tray real quick. Everything rests on here. This is your drip tray, which is pretty straightforward in case you make a mess or whatever. It's not going on your countertop. It's catching any residual um, splash or anything like that, particularly when you're using the steam wand. Um, once you take it, you know, whatever container you're steaming your milk in or frothing your milk, um, when you take it away, it might drip or whatever. So you can angle it back here. Of course, if you pull this away, your cup, you know, after you pull your shot of espresso and it drips down or whatever, it's not going on your countertop. But I like this, it's very easily removable. Pretty much all these machines are the same thing. All things slides out. In this specific case, it's a plastic drip tray and it has a, uh, a metal insert on top. I lift this up, you'll see it's very easy to clean. Just wash it in the sink. What's pretty cool about this too is that there's a, a little plastic piece in here that floats, all right, and it pushes up. And obviously you can see it's like a bright international reddish orange color. So basically, as you're going through the process of using the machine, this will slowly push up and up and up as it gets filled up to let you know that it's time to uh, empty your tray. And there, it holds quite a bit of water. You can see it goes all the way in the back of the machine there. So, the whole thing just pushes right in. All right, so first I wanna show you, I'm just gonna brew a uh, shot of espresso to show you the, uh, the motions here and show you the buttons and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put my little mug under there. Let's pull this forward so you can get a better look at it. So once you turn on, like I said, um, when you turn on the, the power switch on the back there, this front will be flashing red. Once you push it, the machine's on. When you push it off again, it just goes back into a power save mode. Okay, let's turn it back on. Bunch of different icons here. They're very straightforward. They use, obviously the pictures represent what it is. Basically four buttons on the front here, your control buttons. Um, the power one, which I already showed you. Underneath it, there's a, a coffee bean and a little scoop. Now when you cycle through here, you basically have four options, okay? The first option here is a little one bean, all right? The second one's two beans, the third one's three beans, and the last one is that little scoop. This is gonna be your, um, you know, how powerful your coffee is, how strong it is. One being, you know, weak, weaker coffee, two being a medium roast, and then three being basically a bolder or darker, stronger roast. All right, excuse me, not roast, um, actually your shot. So when you change the amount of beans, you're changing the amount of uh, coffee it's grinding, okay? If you want a, a lighter coffee, it, it's not gonna grind as much. You go on three beans, it's gonna grind the maximum for that specific shot. I found I happen to prefer really strong coffee, so I always stay at three beans. What's pretty cool is that when you go to that fourth option, it goes to the little scoop, and that's when you use your bypass doser on top. If you're putting pre-grounds in there, or pre-ground coffee, you put it directly in there, and then you wanna make sure you're on your scoop so it knows to pull it from there as opposed to grinding. As far as the grinder inside this machine, um, it, it's pretty quiet. Uh, I have a Keurig, actually it's right here. I still use it, it's still an awesome machine, but nothing like this. Um, that thing's pretty loud. <laughs> I have the first, first generation one, and when that thing's going, it is screaming in the morning, it wakes me up. Um, with this machine, with the grinder on, it's, it's pretty quiet. Um, it's not dead silent, but it's not rumbling or anything like that, even though it's vibrating in there. It's pretty contained and, and pretty quiet. Um, so yes, I'm going to go to three beans for the strongest coffee or the most grinds available. And then you have two buttons on the left here. The top button is showing, let me zoom in here so you can see it's a little better. The top button is showing a, um, like a half filled 
cup and then the bottom one's a more filled cup. You can easily program these. It's really easy to program. Basically when you get your machine new, when you uh, or at any point you can program these and change the, you know, how it's programmed. Basically you push and hold the button down. You hold it the, down the entire time. It's going to first grind your beans, then um, you know, fill up. It's going to tamp inside, which is basically compressing the coffee grounds, and then it's going to start brewing. You hold this down the entire time, okay? Once it starts brewing your shot inside, you let go when that's enough. And it will always remember that exact amount. Not how much you're grinding, um, but it's good amount. It's good to uh, remember exactly how much uh, coffee it's actually dispensing into your glass. So what I've done is I programmed this to basically be one shot of what I would consider one shot of espresso. And then um, on the bottom button, it's the same thing. You can program whatever you want, but for this one, I programmed it for a for my specific mug. So when I push this, it'll brew coffee until that specific mug is filled to where I want it. Really, really simple, really straightforward. At any time at all, I can push and hold that, and I can actually you know reprogram it. It's really, really simple. I love that feature. Now, at any point in time, if you push this button once, it'll show just the one cup here, and it'll brew your one shot. Uh, if I push it twice, it'll show the double cup, and basically has two shots. What's cool about this is that if it does two shots, it'll go through the entire process again and grind fresh beans. It won't put hot water through those already used beans, okay? So if I do two shots or even two cups of coffee, it'll go through the whole process twice, all right? So if I have enough company or something, or if I haven't wanted two cups back to back <laughs> as fast as I can, um, I would just double hit the button. Um, that's pretty much it for the buttons on the front here. Then you have uh, this kind of a knob. Now you have two position, well, three positions. Right now it's just on the, the upright position, which, which it has to be in to brew your coffee. Uh, to the left, if I return this to the left, which I'll show you in a couple minutes, um, it'll go to the steam option, and to the right will be hot water. You can dispense hot water with this machine if you're making a cup of tea or doing whatever. Like I said, if I wanted to just put some hot water in my cup to warm it, I can do that. So it does just dispense water. So I'm going to, let's just make a one shot of espresso real quick and take a little sip and try it and just to show you how it works. And then after that, I will make a, uh, a milk-based drink so you can see how that, the, the steam wine works. So by the way, at any point in time, if you're out of water or if your garbage container is filled up with grinds, um, you will have a blinking light, you know, the appropriate light that'll come up either on the top or the right and just letting you know what the deal is. All right, so it, it's very good about letting you know if something's wrong, so it's not going to go through a cycle and then you're going to run out of water or something. It'll let you know in advance. Uh, as you saw before, it's really easy. You just pull these containers out. Now, when they're out, you'll also get that same warning light. So if I'm out of water or if this, con if this container is not properly seated in, I'll have that warning light. All right, same thing on the other side. The garbage. The warning light comes up here, which shows a little bucket with, like, pucks in it. And once I brew a cup here, I will show you what the the uh, coffee grinds look like as well. Really easy to clean up. So anyway, put my mug under there. I'm using a clear one. These are really cool Italian mugs, or glasses I should say. I got these as well from uh, Whole Latte Love. And these little metal rings pop off so it's easy for cleaning. But it's kind of a traditional Italian uh, espresso mug. It's pretty cool. I like it. So anyway. Um, Alright, so power's on. All you have to do, this is preset for one shot. So I'm going to push this button. I already selected how strong I want my coffee. It's three beans. So I'm pushing the button once, and I'll go through the process. As things are happening, I'll tell you what's going on. So first, grinding our beans. Pulling the appropriate amount of beans down into the grinder. What you're hearing now is the, uh, a pre-soak. What it does is this noise right there. It's wetting my grinds first so that um, when it brews through, it's, uh, it's already prepped. It's better for brewing. Go into all the details of how this works. And, and this video is not just for uh, coffee connoisseurs or you know hobbyists who, who love their coffee and have a passion for coffee. If nothing else, it's, it's an informative video for people who just didn't know about this kind of stuff. This is new to me. I knew that I wanted to, uh, you know, indulge into the uh, the whole world of espresso and as well as different uh, milk-based coffee drinks. I've always been a coffee fan. Ever since I was about 10 years old, I like coffee. Of course, I've gone through different phases. As a 10-year-old, I loved coffee like I guess most 10-year-olds do if you do drink coffee. And that's pretty much a whole lot of uh, 
milk and sugar with a little bit of coffee in it. <laughs> it's more like a candy milkshake than anything else. But uh, I remember taking a trip with my grandfather and um, he drank his coffee black and he refused to ever prepare it the way I wanted it. So I got used to drinking black coffee on my trip and I came back and I never went back. I, I preferred black coffee. Just very simple. I wanted the quality bean and then, you know, quality coffee to drink and not drown that out by sugar and cream. But uh, these days, I wanted, like I said, I want to experiment. I kind of got into the whole Starbucks thing. And I mean, not that I personally go, but, you know, learning and reading and, and hearing about people's experiences with different coffee houses and baristas and this, that, and the other thing. And it got interesting. And I thought, well, what's the big deal? I've never had a cappuccino. I've never had a, a latte. I've never had a macchiato. Uh, I never had any of these things. Didn't know what they were. And I wanted to learn more about them. And as you guys should probably know by now, when I get into a hobby, I <laughs> dive in head first. And so I knew I was going to get an espresso machine to try out, and I wanted to learn everything about it. And in doing research, I found a bunch of different companies, of course, that offer them. But there's one specific company that stood out to me in a lot of different ways. And before I really get into the review, I want to talk about that company in general. And they are Whole Latte Love. That's where I got this specific machine. That's where I got the coffee you see on the left-hand side, even the mugs on that are on the uh, um, cup warmer on top of the machine. Um, this company, first of all, their, their website layout was by far superior to any other website. And in fact, I think it's a, uh, it's a great format that I think any company can go by. When you go to their website, everything is categorized so perfectly and so conveniently, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to look through. And I've literally spent probably two or three hours looking at all their products because it's so easy to use. Um, I really wish that other knife companies and uh, you know even gun related stuff and all kinds of things that I'm interested in, all my different hobbies, uh, outdoor gear, any kind of uh, company that I'm going to be buying a product from, I wish it was set up in a very similar manner uh, to Whole Latte Love. And when you click on a product, you, the drop down menus, they obviously have uh, uh, user feedback with uh, reviews, but the details they give you not only on the product, but you know even comparing it to other similar products you may like. Um, having an actual like chart that's showing you the differences and the pros and cons.